Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for taking break. I know we're all tired and 10 pounds fatter, but today we have to learn a lesson about grabbing exponential functions. That was low energy. <laughs> we'll take it today. All right, so if you are a book person and you are following along in your book, I'm going to teach you a little bit differently than what your book's teaching you. Um, I'm going to draw the connection between the two at the end, but I'm just going to show you, I think, in general, for the sake of time, since we're almost out of time now. This is six one. No, I meant like sake of time as in like how much longer we have in the course. All right, so exponential functions. Here's what it looks like. This is going to look intimidating, but let me, I'm going to break everything down. Now, we've talked a lot about transformations of functions. So your book walks you through H and K being transformations, H being your horizontal shift, left and right, and K being your up and down shift, right? And so they're taking the parent function and they're shifting from there. Instead of that, I'm going to show you how to come up with the graph on its own without shifting and stretching. But I do want you to be able to understand the shifts and the stretches and the shrinks and all that. All right, so here's what you need to understand. Let me show you graphically what these look like. My pen's not been wanting to work today. I haven't been wanting to work today. There it goes. All right. Um, we have what we call growth. And then we have what we call decay. And so these graphs are a little bit funky as compared to what you're used to. They have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so this is what we call an asymptote. Okay, is a big fancy word for a pretty easy concept. An asymptote is an invisible line that bounds the graph, meaning the graph can't go past that. Okay, so you think about it, it gets really, really, really close, but it can never touch it. Okay, so with growth. Isn't that the same thing as a restriction we did like in chapter two? It's kind of like a restriction, but it's a little different than a restriction because it's, I mean, it does restrict the graph, but. Are these those things that we did on the, um, the study on the, like, Yes, yes. That you didn't know how to do yet. Oh, yeah. So, an asymptote, yeah. It, yes, yes, there you go. It's easier for me to, to see it on a decay graph as opposed to a, a growth graph when you see it for the first time because you, you're still reading left to right. So think about this for just a minute. This graph is coming down. It's getting closer and closer and closer to zero, right? But it's never actually touching zero. So think about <coughs> taking a number and dividing it by two, right? If you start at six, you divide it by two, you get, and then you divide it by two, and then you divide it by two. Okay, so think about if you took three and you divide by two, you got three over two, right? Mm -hmm. Divide it by two again, you'd have three over four because you're multiplied by a half, right? The point that I'm getting to is that you can continue to divide by and half and never get to zero because math is infinite that way and we can always do it. We can always take half of a number and never hit zero. Does that make sense? So zero is that asymptote. It's kind of a value that it's approaching and it's getting really close to, but it's never touching. Does that make sense to you? A little bit? And how do you approach zero? How do you get zero? You won't ever get zero. There's an asymptote there saying you'll never be this, but you'll get really close. This is, just this is with that for right now, yes. Can what be negative? You can, it can be, that asymptote can be anywhere. So it's never, never going so across the axis. It's not necessarily never reaching zero, it's just never reaching <coughs> that is. Correct. So it could be that this asymptote actually occurred, ooh, at, yeah, maybe I had an asymptote way down here. It, you can, you can have a vertical asymptote. With exponential growth and decay, we're only going to have horizontal asymptotes. Okay. When we get to logs in a couple sections, we'll have vertical asymptotes. And when we, 
if we ever get to rational functions, we'll have vertical and horizontal asymptotes. You can have them all within graphs, but for right now, we just have the horizontal. So I apologize. I thought we had covered, talked about what an asymptote was. But that's okay, because it's not bad. All right. So <clears throat> these growth and decay graphs have horizontal asymptotes, right? And the parent graph, whenever it doesn't have an H or a K on here, that, that horizontal asymptote is always at zero. That's why I drew it at zero there initially. But if you look, are we all clear on how this graph does? Growth, meaning it shoots up real quick, right, as you go from left to right, and decay creeps down as you go left to right. We use growth and decay a lot in real life. You've probably done it. It's growth what? I'm sorry. You know. Go ahead. Growth will always, it may start gradually shooting up. This pen is really killing because me like today. Uh, because yeah. here it's inching up, 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 but then it eventually it'll start. Because in science, really. whenever bacteria divides, that's I was going to say, grow. exactly. Say well, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, Half-lives in science, that's a decay. That's an exponential yeah. decay. Um, or the bacterial growth. I'll never forget learning this in high school, and it was actually Mr. Matthews was my math teacher. And um, he introduced growth by saying, you have bacteria that live in your mouth. Right, we all know there's bacteria in your mouth. And there was a number, it was a word problem that was in the book, and he was working through it. And he started talking about how many bacteria was in your mouth every hour, and so we figured it up, and we figured it up after eight hours. He said, let's say you sleep eight hours. How many bacteria are now in your mouth? And so we figured it up, whatever it was. They said, now let's say you don't brush your teeth. How many bacteria do you have in your mouth by the end of the, like, by the, end of the day before you go to bed? we are like, oh, my gosh. Because if everyone is multiplying, that's really nasty. It is, isn't it nasty? But it's really what it does. Like, that's for real. For real, for real. So brush your teeth. Okay, so brush your teeth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> what? Nothing. You're telling a story. Okay. You're just being fun. All right. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If the, if the parent graph, if the parent graph, the asymptote is always at zero. Okay. What does this number on the end do to the graph, to the parent graph? Up or down, right? So if it starts at zero and you shift K units, then that's shifting your asymptote as, re as well. So y equals k is always your asymptote. So is the asymptote the, a part of that graph? Like, is it, does it move up with? It does. It does. It moves. Everything on the graph moves and shifts. So now, a left-right shift wouldn't impact it, right? Mm -hmm. It's a horizontal. It's infinite left and right. But an up-down shift wouldn't impact it. Go ahead, Kyle. Yes. <laughs> no, it could. So if you had, um, so for this one, let's say that was negative three. Well, then I know my K on the end is negative three. So whatever else is in this, it's a growth. Um, yeah, it could. You could be if that number on the end was negative four. Oh, you're talking about the graph itself. No, it can't cross the asymptote. You're correct. That's right. I didn't. I'm sorry. Wait, so that's not actually the intercept. That's the asymptote. That's the asymptote. That's exactly right. All right. Um, let's let's analyze this equation just a bit. I'm gonna go to a new page. All right, a times b to the x minus h plus k. We've already said k is your asymptote. Now, sometimes it will look like a is not there, but really a is always there. Okay? If, it, if you don't see it, like if I have something like y equals 3 to the x plus 2 minus 5. It's just one because it's being multiplied, okay? So if it's not there, not note, but not, then it's one, okay? 
Any negative always stays with A. Your B is never going to be negative. Okay? So if you had something like, all right, so for this one we said A was 1. If you had something, if this was negative 3 to the X plus 2 minus 5, then your A is negative 1. Okay? Your B is never going to be negative. All right, so that A is, remember what the, the number in front whenever we multiply by something, that's got my shrinks and stretches, and it's also going to deal with my reflections, okay? If A is not there, then how do we have A? Because B has to be there, because by definition, the exponential function has to have X as an exponent, okay? That's the difference. That's what makes us different than like a quadratic, which would be like X squared, the variable is the base. Now the variable is the exponent, and that's what makes it exponential. So is the variable, which are we going to plug in numbers? Right? Correct. We will. All right. Um, B, we said, is the base. It's never negative. And here's where we'll be able to tell if it's growth or decay. If B is bigger than 1, then it's growth. And if B is less than 1, it's decay. Now, I'm not talking about negative, though, because B can't be negative. If there's a negative there, that's going with A, oh, not point B. Nine is point 9 so would nine be decay. Be 9 would be growth. Correct. So, looking at these two, these are both what? Growth. Because the B is 3 on both of these. Does that make sense? It would be like negative Correct. So, for it to be a decay, it has to be a decimal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A decimal less than 1. A decimal less than 1 or a fraction less than 1, yes. Can you do that to the calculator and graph it? You can, sure. Yes. Can B be 1? No. Because in if you have 1 to any power, it's just going to give you 1. It's not going to vary. So what happens when B can't be 0? No. It could, and that would be a decay. All right. One other little thing to tell you about this, and then we're going to do some analyzation and some graphing here. <laughs> All right. One easy point on this that's always on the graph is H. A plus K. Okay. That's going to take in, because 0A, that's me. Is that what you're looking at? Huh? Oh. <laughs> All right, so what this is doing, you got a question, Indies? What you got? H is going to be the opposite sign that's there. Yeah, but everything else will be the same. Um, this is taking it. Normally, if we had time, what I'd have you do is graph the parent function and transform from there. So shift it, slide it, shrink it, stretch it, whatever you need to do. But um, the parent function would be without your H and K. Because if you, have, if you have A times B to the X, then if you plug in 0 for X, you'll get A back every time, right? So 0, A is a point on the graph. But to take into account your shifts, um, so we do. Uh, so I'll plug it into my calculator. Wait. That's uh, what I said. I don't, I don't want to focus too much on this right now because I'm just going to show you right? shortcut. A times B is not that's right. your, yes, that's your so period. So I did point. point. Just for a like, little thing, I did 1 plus 2 uh, x, exponent thing x. So, but there's no number for x. So what is x? Like, it, it stays at zero. X varies. It stays like the same until it reaches uh, one, two. Negative three, then it starts going up. 
Right. Okay. So it doesn't stay the it? same. It looks like it stays the same, but it's it doesn't. Slowly it's going slowly up. right. It's that asymptote there. But what what is like actually happening here? Because like with all the other graphs, I understand. But this one is more confusing. Okay. So if it's growth, what's happening so is. Um, let's look at an exact equation. Okay. Let's do an example so you see. Okay, and then I think you'll see a little bit better. Let's say I just have, come on, Penn. Do one what? Like, uh, like an A that's not one? Yes. So let's talk before we actually graph it. Let's talk about what we know. How do you know it's decay? B is less than one, which tells me right off the bat it's going to be a decay. What else do you know? The asymptote is at two. Now, in the beginning, I showed you a picture of growth and I showed you a picture of decay, right? Growth. Decay, right? Yeah. And you said this is a decay, but notice in the front my A is negative. What does that do when you throw a negative in front of the graph, in front of the function? So, okay. It flips it, right? It reflects it. It reflects it over X. So I'm going to take this, this decay here, and it's actually going to reflect. So it should look like this when it's graphed because it's reflected, okay? I just want you to understand when you see what happens, why it's happening. That negative in front, whenever you throw a negative in front of an equation, it reflects it over x. Okay. It's still decay. It's just a reflected decay. So, like, what are we trying to? What is the goal? Are we just trying to get? We're going to graph. So we're just going to graph and analyze. Yeah. We're going to pull this up once I get you comfortable with growth and decay. We're going to do some modeling with growth and decay and real world examples with growth and decay. What would it be do I mean, we just no, 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 no. Right now we're just looking at it. Don't, we're going to do it together. Just wait. I'll show you what we're going to do. Indius. No, it stays. It's going to stay there. The only thing that's reflecting is the graph itself. Yeah. So you would reflect over the whole x axis, but the asymptote is still there. That too. It's shifted. Really what you're doing is it's reflecting. It's just on the bottom side of the asymptote is what it's doing. Okay. And so what real, real world uh, problem would have a decay if that's a negative? Like it's that that's reflected the yeah. so end. I'll show you. Y'all are getting y'all are getting way ahead. Yeah. So it flips when the A is negative. Flips the when the A is negative. Well, think about it. If you have, like, let's say a half, and you raise it to a power, right? The bigger the power gets, well, one half squared is one fourth, right? One half to the third power is one eighth. It's getting smaller. As x gets bigger, it's getting smaller. So that's why it's decay. Mm, yes. Because one fourth, the square root of one fourth would be one half, which is bigger. Yes, ma'am. Over the yes, or, yes. So not the That's a good, whenever I teach yeah. this in, in the very basic form, I say if there's a, if it's positive in front, it's above the asymptote. If it's negative in front, it's below the asymptote. That's a good way to remember it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is there like a certain name? Is this kind of like line form? Growth and decay. It's exponential functions. Okay, so like if you have, are you going to give this question where it's like put this like in growth and decay form? Might give you some points and you write the equation, but just not yet. Okay. Right now we're just going to graph and look. Growth or decay, graph it, domain range, that kind of thing. All right, so let's get through it. Right now we know below the asymptote, right? We all see why it's below the asymptote because of the negative. We know that it's decay because B is less than 1, and we know that the asymptote is Y plus 2. Does that confuse anybody? All right. I'm going to first graph the asymptote. 
you want me to do you small steps over here? Yes. To graph. Graph the asymptote y equals k. So in this case, my k is 2, so it's y equals Next thing I want to do is plot the, the point that I know, the easy point that I know, right? The easy point that I know is my h, a plus k. Now, this is where you're going to mess up. If you don't see k there, I mean, if you don't see a there, it's 1. Don't forget to add that 1 in if it's not there. Okay? Yeah. Uh, yep. That's A. Yeah. So H, and then you've got A plus K. So this point is 4, negative 1. H, and then A plus K. <clears throat> this is just a shortcut to shifting that point from the parent function is all I'm doing. All right, so four. Remember, this should be below the asymptote, right? Because it's negative in front. <coughs> you only need one more point to graph, and that point's going to be totally up to you. I don't care. It doesn't matter what you use. Um, yep. It's generally your easiest is the same method that we've always used, which is add one to the X that you started with and plug it in. Okay. Growth and decays get really big, really fast or really small, really fast. So you start getting in some difficult numbers if you go too far away from where you started. Generally, if you stay right beside it, what's going to happen is this exponent is going to be one when you simplify it and it's going to make it a lot easier. Negative 3. Order of operations will kill you here if you don't pay attention. Simplify the exponent first. And if you just added 1 to that x, then you should just get 1. Now multiply. You with me? <coughs> and now add. <coughs> 2 is the same thing as 10 over 5, so negative 6 plus. Plus. Negative 6 fifths plus 10 fifths would be 4 fifths. Mm -hmm. So this point is 5, and then almost up to 1. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm looking at your work, at your points, and then we'll look at the graph. There's only one way for this. You know it's going to hug the asymptote from one direction or the other, right? And the other is going to yeah. down really fast. There's only one way that you can connect these that that's going to happen. And there it is. Six. Is that confusing? But then if you flip it, it's decay still. It is still decay. It's just a reflected decay graph. What's the domain on this? How about the range? To two. To two. No, That's well, right. But, but it's, a, it's not included because it can get as close as possible, but it can't actually touch it. It's real, growth and decay is really not bad. Especially since I'm not making you transform the parent function. But I do want you to understand. I mean, that's where H, H, that's where this is coming from. I'm just, because the parent function, that's where it's coming from. 0A is a point on the parent function. So H, A plus K is just transforming that by H and K. All right, let's do another one together. See what you think. It's not a stupid question. Okay. 
Sure. If the if the A is positive, it's going to be a regular above the asymptote. Yeah. All right. Let's do. I want to get a good one. Actually, wait. I'm going to put something in front. Oh, my goodness, y'all. It's going to be close. Above the asymptote or below? Above, because it's positive in front, right? Um, what else do you know? It's growth because B is bigger than 1, right? It's 6. Negative 3 is my asymptote. Zero. Everybody sees where I got that? What if there was no number on the end? Be at zero. It'd be on the axis, and that is okay. Again, that's part of your parent function before it's transformed. Give me an easy point on the graph. H, there's no H there. H is always hooked to the X up top. Since there's no H, it's zero. A is 0.1 and K is negative three. Really close to the asymptote, but it's not the asymptote. The asymptote is negative 3. I'm at negative 2.9. Pick another one, yeah. 1. one. Point 0.1 times 6 to the first power, and then minus 3. So point 0.6 minus 3. You're correct. It's negative 2.4. So 1... I'm not going up very fast here yet, but I will start. There's only one way to connect these here. It's going to hug to the left, which means it's going to shoot up this way, and it's going to hug down that way. How about domain? If your A is positive, it's above. If your A is negative, it's below. That's exactly right. Here we're actually going to apply it, and I promise I'm almost done. When we start modeling with growth and decay, okay, we use what we call um, a growth model or a decay model. The way I always remember this, um, because you're going to be talking about percents a lot, right? It, mm -hmm. it grows at a rate of, or it decays at a rate of. Um, I think about it with percents, the easiest way I can think is whenever I figure tax, whenever I go mm -hmm. somewhere, right? If tax, what is tax now? 7.8. 7 percent or something? 8%. Okay, so let's say it's 8%. If you wanted to find your total bill, right, and so you took your subtotal, and you want to know what's my total after tax and everything, instead of multiplying by 8% and then adding back to the original, you can always multiply by what? Y'all don't know how to do this? 1.08. Because, because that adds it back in. That gives me 100% well, and another 8%, right? Because it's growing at that rate. And so that's kind of the concept. So, so like, if, you're, if your bill... That was one of the problems. If your, bill, if your bill was $10, right? 
and you needed 8% of that. If, if you multiply it by 0 0.08, that's just going to give you the amount of 8%, right? The amount of tax. Right. But if you did it by 1.08, that's 100% plus the 8%, right? So that's going to give you the total with tax and everything. And that's kind of the concept behind, if you, or that's how it makes sense to me, to think about the growth of the K model. Same thing with yields yes, yes. So the growth model looks like this. Okay. That's a one. Because here, that's all I've done here is I've taken the percent and added one to it. Okay. Was it? I'm sorry, y'all. The decay subtracts the rate out, okay? So your rate is your percent as a decimal, so make sure you change it to a decimal. And I should probably have put here that this is growth. I'll do an example of each. This is really easy. That's why I'm kind of flying through it. When you look at it the first time, you go, what? But then when you see it in action, it's easy. T is your time. Okay, because remember, we're talking about growth or decay over time. It could be, it depends on what your units are in. Um, if you're in science and your whatever isotope has a half-life of 30 minutes or something like that, then your units are half hours, right? So you do how many half hours it happens. Um, if you're talking about growth and your bacteria multiplies every hour, then your units are hours. If you're putting your money in the bank and your interest is building yearly, then your time is in years. So it just depends on what unit your problem is giving it to you, okay? And we will get to some compound interest problems, which we'll do. Mm -hmm. Not today, not today. All right, let me give you an example and then I'll be done. I'm going to get one straight from your book. A cup of green tea contains 35 milligrams of... Oh, I should have probably told you this too. Your A is your initial amount. Sorry. It's where you start. So a cup of green tea contains 35 milligrams. Clearly you know where that's going to go. 35 milligrams of caffeine. I don't know if that's a lot or not. Um, the average can eliminate approximately 12.5% of caffeine from their system per hour. 12.5% per hour. So let's write an equation that represents this. 35 times is it going to be subtract or add? It's at minus. It's subtract, it's minus, because it's decreasing, right? 12.5% is a decimal, 0.125, two places over. And T, but my T is going to be in hours, right? This, what's in parentheses, in case they ask you, this is called my decay factor. And it's what you get after you subtract. If I'm in growth, what do you think it'd be called? Growth factor, okay? So my decay factor here would be 0.875, is that right? Yes, no. Well, I got it's 1.3. Okay, so you can't do that just yet because we would have to use logs to solve that. Wait, don't you? But we will see. You could keep plugging in numbers to see when you got to zero. Zero is actually your asymptote. So like, when you see like 35 minus 0.25 Because you don't know how to solve yet for, so if this is my equation, You don't know how to get T by itself right here. I know, why don't you, why don't you like, you said there's T, why don't you type? Oh, because, I mean, 35 and minus 1.25 is another factor. Okay, so I was a little sick. See, 8 hours is 
Oh, you could you could plug in and see when it would get close to zero. Um. So, what what we were just talking about? Where is your asymptote in this equation? At zero, right? So it's never actually going to be to zero. That's one of those like part life things, I guess, that it cuts in half and in half and in half. Um, how did you get that number? How did I get what number? One minus point one two five. So okay, so I'm doing this inside and then distributing. No, you would have to do what's inside. If you were doing this working out, we'll plug in a, a point. So you have to go order of operations, parentheses, then you do the exponent. Okay, well, then you do the exponent. Let's plug in the top. So look, this is, this is my model. That's my model that tells me how much caffeine is left in my system after T hours. So now you tell me after four hours how many milligrams of caffeine is left in your body. Four hours. Two decimal. Are you confused? Okay. How do I get what? At one minus point one two five. One minus point one two five. Put it on your calculator. Two decimals is good. <laughs> Y'all are getting caught up in the easy part of it. Because it said it's decaying, it said it's going down. If it were saying it was increasing, then there would be a plus there. So now plug 4 in for T. Uh, be very careful, guys, as you do this. When you plug in 4, don't multiply first and then raise to the 4th. If you're doing it separately on your calculator, you'll need to do 0 0.875 to the 4th and then times that by 35. I don't know. I just made it up. Of but whenever you do, so is there a way that you guys plug back in? Because can you do 12.5 times 4? Or it's 1.25 times 4? And then I divide it, well, yeah, times 4. And then Why are you times it by 4? Well, I was just seeing. Raise it to the 4th. So, okay, so 12.5 raised to the 4th. Oh, no, you can't. No, you can't do it that way because whenever you've got a minus or an addition or subtraction in the parentheses, you can't just distribute an exponent through. So you need to subtract first, then do the exponent. Yes, ma'am. So this is saying that 20 point, 20.52 Left in your body after four hours. Left in your body. Left in your body. Is this like actually accurate? I don't know. I think a lot of Real world link. I'm going to pause the sample. One more example. Um... The U.S. consensus, the U.S. consensus, the U.S. census was conducted in 1790. At that time, the population was 3,929,000 guys, 214. Since then, the U.S. population has grown by approximately 2.03%. There's my keyword, grew, grew, right? So I'm talking about growth. Um, annually. So what are my units for my time? Years. Um, so let's write an equation since not, since 1790 for the population. So y equals what was my initial amount? Three million nine hundred twenty nine thousand two hundred and fourteen times one plus my rate. What's my rate? Always two places. Oh. Raised to the T. <laughs> I'm going to simplify this just by adding what's in parentheses, right? Mm -hmm. So my growth factor, yes. Where's my asymptote? Yeah. Well, the so first you just want an equation, and then the next part of the question will say, estimate 
since 1790. That's right. That was my first year. So maybe I say, estimate what the population was in the year 1812. So you need to do 1812 minus... What was the result? 90. So then I would plug 22 in for T. So someone with a calculator, because this is not an in-your-head kind of problem. <laughs> what is it? Oh, no, I Well, we're going to round it to the nearest person since you can't have a point something of a person. Yeah, he would like Oh, there's one in every crowd. Okay. <laughs> but they count as a whole person on the census. Okay, we have a conflict of answers. Six one one three nine. Three, two. Do the X no, 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 one, two. Okay. What do you mean? Like, did you yeah. put it all in your calculator? Or like, did you do 1.0203 times the T and then multiply? No. Nope.